It's Thursday, October 28th, and this is your Barbados Today Evening News Update. A leading regional health official advises Barbados that while it has adjusted protocols for vaccinated travelers to the country, it must, however, facilitate strategic testing of tourists. Executive Director of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, Dr. Joyce St. John, says, while the government's decision has significant merit, it must remain on its guard in light of the new and potentially more transmissible Delta Plus strain in the United Kingdom. I have to say that um, with statistics as were presented by the Minister of Health, of the, the kinds of returns of positive uh, COVID-19 tests from the tourists that are, are coming in, it's really very difficult to maintain uh, an argument for a, a minister of finance to keep pouring that kind of funding into testing mm -hmm. when you're getting less than 1% of the test being positive. At the same time that you are seeing a clear increase of transmission in the community and you need to be able to test the community. The supplies in um, the wider world are dwindling for testing. So you need to be strategic. So from that perspective, I understand. However, I would exhort Dr. Bess, he's acting right now, so I'm talking to him, I would exhort Dr. Best to ensure that there is enough testing and also strategic testing, not just scattershot. You've got to do some testing from certain that, um, sending countries to ensure that you will capture the inevitable introduction of the Delta Plus range of variants. Delta Plus is a, is a heading to capture. And make sure that you send the samples to CARFA quickly enough that we can detect the uh, Delta Plus, please. Dr. St. John was speaking on a COVID-19 discussion hosted by COVID-19 Public Advisor David Ellis. Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Anton Bess was also a guest on the show. He explained that the protocols were changed to redirect resources to tackle widespread community spread. What we did for the travel protocols, as Dr. St. John said, we said, look, we're pouring resources here, but guess what? We need resources elsewhere. And we needed resources in the community because we have not just a little community spread, we have a lot of community spread. We got a more than community spread in Barbados. We need to do more testing. So the resources have been deployed elsewhere, right? And that, to my mind, is, is being strategic and rational use of existing resources. We're not getting bang for the buck regarding what we're doing. To the latest COVID-19 numbers, 358 people have tested positive for the viral illness from 2,275 tests conducted by the Best Santos Public Health Laboratory. Of the 185 males and 173 females, 72 persons were under the age of 18 and 286 were 18 years and older. There were 748 people in isolation facilities and 4,976 in home isolation. Two deaths were recorded on Wednesday, a 55-year-old male and a 63-year-old male who died on October 26, but was subsequently confirmed positive for COVID-19. They were both unvaccinated. Their deaths bring the number of lives lost to the viral illness to 151. In other news this Thursday, the Mia Motley administration is in the process of forming different compacts with the private sector that will see government stepping in to provide assistance while industry operators will agree to certain measures. At Wednesday's Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industry Forum, the Prime Minister said special agreements will be developed between several groups, including the transport sector. And we are now hoping to complete a number of compacts. One, with the public service vehicles and public transportation sector. And all a compact is, is that you need to see progress, but we need to see action too. And therefore, what is it? that is going to bind us in the middle to be able to catalyze action. We accept, as we did already, in good faith and increased bus fares, 
But we accept now that there is a determination that we must also increase taxi fares that have not been increased for more than 12 years. But at the same time, there must be a mechanism for the independent determination as to what a fare is that is not based only on a few routes being placed on a card at the airport. Because Motley added that government was also aware that the closure of schools due to the pandemic has hurt the cash flow of businesses that would usually benefit from the sale of uniforms and they too will benefit from the initiative. And we have agreed that we will buy 70% of the uniforms that are available in the country and that once school resumes, I hope, Minister Bradshaw, by early in the new year, once we can get the vaccination numbers up, that we are then in a position to sell on those uniforms and we will sell them at a 15% discount to parents, recognizing that they themselves have been equally challenged over the course of this year. But if you think we're going to do that without extracting a commitment from them to transform their industry, you've got the wrong body here. And the compact therefore must be how are you going to retool your industry, use computer-aided designs, work with the BIDC to create a cluster so that persons can micro-lease on equipment that they may not have the capital to buy themselves, partner with fashion designers. There's regional and international news after this short break. I'll admit, when the COVID-19 vaccines were first introduced, I was a bit skeptical. I wondered, how did they create these vaccines so quickly? I heard so many theories and was suffocated by all the noise. But once I did my own research and began speaking to my friends in the field, I got the facts and decided to take the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. I am now proud to say that I'm fully vaccinated. I am one who believes in choice, but I also know that with each choice comes consequences. COVID-19 vaccines have been proven to provide a layer of protection against COVID-19. We have been in this situation for far too long now. It is time to get our lives back. We still need to social distance, wash our hands and mask up, but having an extra layer of protection with the COVID-19 vaccines, we should feel more happy that we're protecting ourselves, our family and friends, our colleagues and our clients. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Regional happenings in Antigua and Barbuda, all schools will return to full face-to-face -face classes from next Tuesday. The announcement came today from Information Minister Melford Nicholas. They are going to implement the plan for education as of next Tuesday. And uh, they are, first of all, going to be attempting to uh, go back to face-to-face -face learning in a hybrid environment where um, they're going to be using the phase two approach where they may have some structured um, return to certain classes and they may do it over a period of time um, to allow for um, adequate spacing. Nicholas also announced that vaccine mandates for the private sector are set to intensify. We are now mandating that all businesses, all businesses that have five or more employees are required to ensure that all employees are vaccinated by the 15th of November, at least move towards um, obtaining the first dose by the 15th of November. Further afield, social media giant Facebook is rebranding. CEO Mark Zuckerberg says it's part of the company's effort to encompass its virtual reality vision for the future. Mark Zuckerberg says he hopes this new name, Meta, will encompass Facebook's vision for the future, known as the Metaverse, a sort of future internet where people could potentially interact, socialize, and buy products that haven't even been invented yet using things like virtual reality headsets. Facebook say they plan to hire 10,000 workers here in the European Union to help them build this metaverse. They also say they're not the only company working on this, but of course, they have just now rebranded to the name Meta. Now, is that a coincidence? And indeed, many other critics are pointing out that this is coming at the same time when Facebook is undergoing a reputational crisis. Not only do you have leaked documents suggesting that Facebook is aware about how its platforms were promoting potentially dangerous content, but you also have former employees and whistleblowers like Frances Haugen, who has said that she believes that Facebook has been putting profit before people's online safety. 
Indeed, one of the first people who responded to the news of this name change was the CEO of Twitter, Jack Dorsey. And here's what he had to say. He said, Meta, is this referring to itself or to the convention of its genres? He described it as self-referential. But something else that was also pointed out by Konstantinos Komaitis, formerly of the Internet Society, is this is not the first time that the Greek language has been used as inspiration for a big tech giant. It was in 2015 when Google tried to rebrand and its firm under the name Alphabet. That yet hasn't really taken on, but it will be interesting to see now how many people still refer to the company Facebook as Facebook or under its new name, Meta. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.